Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem kth largest element in an array. So we're given an integer array nums and an integer k. We want to return the kth largest element in the array. By largest, they mean largest in sorted order, not the largest distinct element. So we could have duplicates in this array. And so when they say, let's say uh, k equals one, right? If k was one and let's say this array was sorted, then that would mean we want the rightmost element because we want the first largest element. If k is two, we want the second largest element so not the largest element but the second largest element so that's how it works now the most obvious solution you probably could already come up with by yourself is just take the input array it's not necessarily going to be sorted but we could sort it ourselves what would be the time complexity well it would be uh n log n right that's the time complexity to sort and since this is an array once we sort it we can instantly check the index that we want what index are we going to want let's say k is two what index would we want in nums we'd want the second largest right so instead of the largest we'd want the second largest so how would we do that we would just take the length of the array minus k that would give us the index that we want to get to but this is a medium problem so you can assume that there are going to be different solutions can we do better than n log n well it turns out we can and one solution is using a max heap using a heap will be slightly better because we won't have to sort the entire input array what we can do with a heap is you can take an entire input array like this one and you can heapify it you can turn it into a heap and you can do that in o of n time but just because we have a heap doesn't mean we've necessarily solved the problem because we don't necessarily want the largest element in the array we might want the kth largest element so from that heap after we've already done an n operation to turn this array Array into a heap then we're gonna have to pop from that heap k times because it's a max heap so we're gonna pop k times so we can get the kth largest element every time you pop from a heap it takes a log n operation where n's the size of the heap how many times are we gonna pop we're gonna pop k times because we want the kth largest so this is the time complexity of the heap solution you can see it's slightly better than n log n depending on whatever k happens to be so in some cases it will be better than the sorting approach if k is uh, relatively small and that's about as good as you can do in terms of worst case time complexity but there is a solution that's better actually if you want to know the average case time complexity and that's what i'm going to be focusing on because that's i think the more difficult of the three solutions that i've talked about so this third solution actually can be achieved with o of n average time complexity not worst case the worst case actually happens to be n squared so in the worst case, it's not that efficient, but in the average case, it is pretty efficient. What algorithm am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the algorithm quick select. It's pretty similar to a standard algorithm that you may know called quick sort. And if you haven't heard of this algorithm, I'm gonna be teaching it to you today. If you have, then you can probably implement this yourself. Let me show you how to do that now. So let's take a look at this first example. And like I said, this algorithm is gonna be really similar to quick sort. And the main part about quick sort is the partition. So that's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna take this entire array and partition it into two halves, right? We're gonna somewhat cut it in half. One half of the array is gonna be every value in, let's say this half of the array is less than or equal to every value in the right half of the array. That's how we're gonna partition it. So how can we make sure that it's always gonna be half? Well, it turns out we can't. That's why the worst case time complexity is gonna be n squared and the average case time complexity is gonna be O of n. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna randomly pick a pivot. Let's just pick the rightmost element each time as the pivot value. When I say pivot, I mean this value is gonna decide what goes in the left half and what goes in the right half. So what we're gonna do now, we selected this as our pivot. We're gonna start at the beginning of the array and we're gonna go through each element and we're gonna compare each element to this pivot value. So for example, three is less than or equal to four, right? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna make sure to place it in the left half of the array. It's already in this spot. So what we're gonna do is basically just swap it with itself. And then we're gonna shift our, uh, 
pivot pointer uh, over here. This pointer is basically going to indicate every time we find a value such as this one or this one that's less than or equal to four, then we can put it in this spot wherever this pointer happens to be. And then once we've done that, we're going to take this pointer and shift it again to indicate that, okay, next time we find a value like this one that's less than or equal to four, then we're going to put the value in this uh, position. So in the actual code, we're going to be doing this in place, but I just drew an extra piece of memory just to kind of help you visualize it. So we're, we're going to take our three, keep it in this spot. Three is going to go here. Our, our P pointer is now going to be shifted here. Originally it was over here, but now we shifted it uh, over here. So now we're done visiting this element. We're going to go to the next element, two. Is two less than or equal to four? Yes, it is. So we're going to go ahead and put this value two in the position where P points at. So we're going to put our two over here. P is going to be shifted uh, by one. So let's put P over here. We find another, we go to the next element, right? One, again, it's less than or equal to four. We put one over here and then shift our P value. So one goes here, P is gonna be over here now. Now we get to our first element. That's not less than or equal to four. So what do we do in that case? We're gonna leave this exactly where it is. And, and again, we're gonna get to the next element. Six is again, not less than or equal to four. We're gonna leave it exactly where it is. And before we actually get to the last element, we're gonna stop. So at this point, we, we've, we're basically done going through the entire array, right? And now our array looks something like this, right? We have a four over here. And at this point, what this P pointer tells us is that every element before the P pointer, everything over here is less than or equal to this value four. And then every value uh, over here, right, P and, you know, all these remaining elements, except for the last one, of course, all of these elements are going to be greater than four, right? Because all of these are less than or equal to four. So these must be greater than four. That's what we mean by partitioning the array. Now, note Notice, just because we partition the array, this is not in sorted order, right? It's not necessarily, the halves of the array, the partitions are not necessarily going to be in sorted order, but they are going to be partitioned so that everything here is less than everything here. And one last swap that we're going to do now is we're going to take our pivot value over here, which we selected as the rightmost element, and we're going to swap it with what ever happens to be at this pointer right now. So let's do that last swap. We're going to put we're going to replace this value with a 5 and we're going to replace this value with a 4. So this might be a little hard to read, but so the reason why we did that you're probably wondering, why did we even do the partition in the first place? So now we know, all we know at this point is we have some value at this pointer P. This is the value we use to do the partition. Right now it's over here. And we know that everything over here is greater than it. And everything over here is going to be less than or equal to this partition value, right? That's good. So now what we're going to check is where is that K value that we're looking for? Where is the second largest value in the array? Remember what we determined earlier that we can find that target value at the index length minus K, right? So what the length of this entire thing is six minus K, which is two. So we're going to go to index four. This is zero, one, two, three, four. This is index four. So all we have determined at this point so far is there are two elements on this half of the array, right? So we know for sure that the the second largest element must be somewhere here. We don't know for sure that this is the second largest element or that this is the second largest element because remember, these are not necessarily gonna be sorted. In this case, they're not. So, so we don't know it's over here, but we know it's somewhere in this half of the partition, right? It's definitely not here and it's definitely not here here, right? If the the K value is different, right? Maybe K was a really big number, then we'd get length, which is six minus, let's say K was four, uh, then we'd get two, right? That would tell us that, okay, the target value is going to be in the left half of the array. Or it could even be such that, let's say K was equal to three, then we'd get length, which is six minus K, which is three, then we'd get the value three. So then we'd go to index equals three, and then we'd, we'd see that this is that index, right? And then if, if it's ever this case, right, where that value, that target value is exactly at P, 
wherever that partition happened to be, then we've actually found our result. Do you know why that's the case? It's because we know for sure that this is the kth largest value. In this case, we know for sure right now that this value is the third largest value because we know for sure that everything in the left half is less than or equal to this value and we know for sure that there are two values that are greater than this value so, so that must mean that this is the third largest value right so we found the third largest value but we're looking for the second largest value so basically what i'm getting at is we're going to do this recursively so instead of uh, basically we've eliminated that these cannot possibly be the result so now we're going to run the exact same algorithm i just showed you the quick sort partition on this part of the array until we find that result until we find k equals to the second largest element and when we actually do that partition on this we're gonna use five as the pivot we're gonna say six is greater than five our p pointer is gonna be here and then at the end we're gonna take this swap it with whatever is with p so then we're gonna have an array like looking like this five and six where this is our partition uh, value this is where p is at and like i said all of this is actually going to be done in place so we will have the ultimate array and then we're going to look at k you know the length minus two which is going to find put us at this index then we're going to have found our result five is the second largest element because we know for sure there's at least there's exactly one element that's greater than five right there's one element that's greater than five that must mean five is the second largest element so that's mainly how the code is gonna work. So if you recall how quicksort works, it's a little bit different, right? Let's just analyze the time complexity right now. So with quicksort, when you do the partition, then you have to recursively run uh, you know, quicksort on the left half and on the right half, which ends up giving us a average case time complexity of n log n. But in this case, uh, the average case is actually gonna be big O of n because we're not gonna be looking at both halves of the partition. We're only gonna be looking at at most one half of the partition, wherever we know that the target value happens to be. And assuming in the the average case every time we choose a pivot that pivot is going to be somewhere in the middle of the array it's going to be middle of the pack where half the elements are less than it half of them are greater than it that's going to give us you can probably skip over this part you probably don't care but just to analyze the time complexity we're gonna to have to iterate through the entire array once right so let's say that's an n operation then we're gonna to have to let's say iterate through half of the array which is going to be n over two operation then we're gonna to have to iterate through half of that array which is going to be n over four this is an infinite series that you might remember from calculus this infinite series evaluates to two times n which we know is linear so that means the average taste uh, average case time complexity is big o of n uh, that's the average case but we know that actually in some cases uh, we could have a pivot value let's say six was our pivot value right six was here then when we partition the array our p pointer is actually going to be over here so and let's say we didn't find the result then we're gonna have to uh, look through pretty much the entire array except one element and let's and it could be uh, the array could be organized in such a way that every time we choose a pivot that pivot is always the greatest value so basically each time we, we iterate through the entire array we eliminate one value we iterate through the entire array again we eliminate one value we iterate through the entire array again eliminate one value so that's an n squared time complexity in the worst case but like I said the average case is actually big O of n Okay, that was definitely a mouthful. So now we are ready to get into the code. It's not too difficult. The code, and like I mentioned earlier, the easiest way to solve this problem is just two lines of code, sort it and then return uh, the length minus K, you know, that index. And that actually happens to be faster on leak code than the quick select uh, the quick select algorithm. But I'm still going to code the quick select anyway because the average case happens to be more efficient and it's definitely a more interesting solution. So, like I said, the index that we're going to be looking for, the target index that we're looking for, is going to be the length of the array minus k. So what I'm going to do is just take k and reassign it to this just to make it easier for us because this is the index right k i'm going to use k as the index that we're looking for the kth largest element if the array was sorted so now uh, we're going to do that recursive quick select algorithm and since every time the subarray that we're looking at and running quick select changes we're going to pass in two variables we're going to pass in the left and right pointer this tells us on which portion of the array are we currently running quick select on then when you actually implement quick 
select, you choose the uh, pivot. We're gonna choose the rightmost value because it's easy. Uh, and we're gonna have our P pointer initially being at the leftmost value. So uh, pivot is gonna be set to nums of right. P, the pointer, is gonna be set to the leftmost position, just like I showed in the drawing. And then, uh, Pretty much like the drawing, we're just gonna go ahead and iterate through the entire array except the last element. So we're gonna go from index left all the way to right. Uh, right is non-inclusive in Python, so it's not actually gonna reach the right index. And we'll go through each element. If this element, nums of i, happens to be uh, less than or equal to the pivot value, then we're gonna swap it with uh, the left index, or not the left index, actually the p index, right? Wherever we're putting uh, the partition values. So if this is the case, we're gonna set nums of p equal to nums of i, and we're gonna set nums of i equal to nums of p. You can do that in one line in Python. You don't need a swap helper function. We can do it just like this. Uh, so we're just swapping these two values. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, remember, every time we do do a swap, though, then we want to increment the P pointer because next time we do a swap, we want to put it in the next position. Okay, so that's the partition. And the last part of the partition is to swap the pivot value with the P index. So we're going to set nums of P equal to the pivot value, and we're going to set nums of right uh, the you know what this pivot value is currently in the rightmost position we're going to swap that with whatever happens to be in nums of p so nums of right is going to be set to nums of p this might be confusing maybe because i use pivot so you can actually rewrite it so instead of using pivot i could actually just go ahead and write nums of r we're just swapping the rightmost value with whatever happens to be at nums of p right at our p index Okay, and once that is done, then we potentially may have found a solution or we may not have found a solution. So, so let's check, is our K value less than P? The K is the target index we're looking for. If it's less than P, that means we have to run quick select now on the left portion of the array because we have to look for a smaller index. So we're gonna call quick select and for the indices, we're gonna pass in left remains the same, but the right pointer is now gonna be shifted towards the left. Right is now gonna be set to P minus one because we can look at the left portion of this uh, array now, this partitioned array. That's if K is less than P, we could have another case and we're actually gonna be returning this value, whatever it happens to be. And the else case is if uh, K is greater than P. If K is greater than P, that means we have to look in the right portion of the array. So in that case, we can return quick select, uh, looking at the right portion of the array, which means our left pointer is gonna be uh, changed to be P plus one now, and our right pointer is gonna stay the same. That's the other case. The last case else is if P is exactly equal to K. In that case, we can just go ahead and return nums of P, uh, because we know for sure P is the kth largest element. And yes, since all of these uh, end up returning something, that is the entire code. That's the entire quick select algorithm. Uh, now all we have to do is actually call it. So we can call quick select for the pointers. Of course, we'll just pass in zero for the left boundary. And for the right boundary, we'll pass in length uh, minus one so that we can run quick select on the entire input array and then return whatever the result is. So I'm gonna run it to prove to you that it works, even though since the worst case is n squared and some of the uh, test cases on leak code actually happen to be you know poor cases for quick select, it doesn't run very efficiently on some of those test cases. So this actually isn't very efficient on leak code, but you know this is definitely a good algorithm to know. In the average case, it does beat the sorting approach. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.